Hi, I'm Ali Plum and welcome to the show that takes you inside the movies you might not know were actually shot just down the road. This is the Film Fan's Guide to... Sussex. Sussex, county of dramatic coastlines ripe for emotional homecomings and towns that perfectly encapsulate the glamour and romance of the English Riviera, like Eastbourne, Brighton, Hove and Brighton and Hove. In 1066, Sussex saw the Norman invasion. More recently, it's seen a different kind of invasion, an invasion of movie icons. Is this really what I'm saying? Of course, this is the bit in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, where our Robin comes home and sort of eats the sand and rolls about on it a bit. I've since tried the sand myself, and I'll be honest, it's not that good. This scene is significant for a couple of reasons. For starters, this is where Kevin Costner attempts an English accent on English soil for the first time. Well, on English sand. I thought you'd say that. And for seconds, Costner and Freeman walk from here, Seven Sisters Cliffs, to South Yorkshire's Loxley Castle via Hadrian's Wall. It's not the route I would have personally taken, but I guess they didn't have maps on their phones back then. Just behind me is Cuckmere Haven, where Kira Knightley and James McAvoy frolicked happily towards the end of 2007's critically acclaimed Atonement. Just a reminder though that Atonement is not a rom-com, and what you're witnessing right now is actually very, very sad. The cliffs here at Beachy Head and Seven Sisters are, as you can see, spectacular, though they often don't get the credit they deserve, with some cinema goers mistaking them for the White Cliffs of Dover. And I know how they feel, because people are so often mistaking me for other really attractive men, like Bradley Cooper or Ryan Gosling, or Atonement's very own James McAvoy, when he was playing Mr Tumnus in the Narnia movies. I'm so sorry. These cliffs have appeared in quite a few movies now, usually in scenes where vehicles are careering off them. Back in the 60s, we had Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Then in the late 70s, there was the undeniably moving moment when Jimmy launches Sting Scooter off Beachy Head in Quadrophenia. And then in the 80s, it stood in for the Rock of Gibraltar as Timothy Dalton's Bond soared off the edge in a Land Rover at the start of the Living Daylights. But then in the noughties, there was a real plot twist where something landed on Seven Sisters Cliffs instead of flying off. And that something was Harry Potter. Shall we? Oh, yeah. uh, we don't want to be late. Come on, get in there now. That's from the Goblet of Fire, where we see a pork he used for the first time and a not yet a vampire, not yet a fully grown adult Robert Pattinson doing a weird walky, runny, floaty landing thing for what I hope is the last time. Right, time to get off these cliffs. If only there was some sort of teleportation device that would let me... Oh, hello. Whoa! And you promise me the VFX later will make me not look like an idiot, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ah, Brian's West Pier. Sadly burnt down 20 years ago. And the Palace Pier has been modernized, so it doesn't feel appropriate for use in period films, <clears throat> which is why we're in Eastbourne. And I'm about to talk to you about Brighton Rock, weirdly. The original 1947 movie adaptation of the classic Graham Greene novel featured the Palace Pier so heavily it was considered a star of the show, alongside one Richard Attenborough. For the 2010 Sam Riley remake, they used Eastbourne Pier instead of Brighton Pier because Eastbourne Pier looks more like Brighton Pier did or does. Basically, this looks more like Brighton Pier than Brighton Pier looks like Brighton Pier. It got a fairly lukewarm response from critics, who really are the worst, by the way, trust me, and got a bit of stick from the public for featuring, again, Eastbourne Pier instead of Brighton Pier on the poster. I could be being obsessive, but it's a point worth making at least five times. And in other Brighton Not Brighton news... Magic Mirror 2022 saw Harry Styles in his first lead role in My Policeman. It's another film set in Brighton, but when we first see Hazard, he's actually promenading along New Haven Beach in some tiny, tiny short shorts. What do you think, ladies? Are we getting wet today? This whole scene is a great example of some unexpectedly complicated movie magic. The film is set in 1950s Brighton. The trouble is, is that Brighton Beach these days doesn't look that much like it did back then. 
So instead, production moved things here to New Haven, which is much quieter, and with a little bit of VFX, they could make it look like Brighton did as it was. So you change the old seafront, and then you add in some bonus beachgoers, and then you add some shorts onto Harry's otherwise naked legs. Okay, that last bit isn't true, but imagine, or don't. Luckily for the proud people of Brighton and Hove, there are some films set there that were actually also shot there. One is so closely associated with the city, there's actually a street there named after it. Well, I say street. Brian and Michelle, we did it here. How lovely. Yes, it's Quadrophenia again, but it's a biggie. In the film, our lead character Jimmy ducks into this alley with his girlfriend to escape some heavy street fighting, and then they begin some heavy petting. Today, I've come here alone, despite it being popular with couples, and um, yeah, there's just some pigeons who I won't be petting. The scene itself is terribly symbolic, terribly poignant. The innocence of young love juxtaposed against the violence of young rage. It's so poignant, in fact, that later on in the film, Jimmy comes back in a state of emotional turmoil just to reminisce. Brian has been used to great effect on the big screen quite a few times, of course. There's the end of the affair with Ray Fiennes and Julianne Moore. Not forgetting Paul Bettany and Kirsten Dunst enjoying the sunset in Wimbledon, the movie that is. It really has seen its fair share of A-listers promenade up and down the seafront. Well, that's it for Sussex. It's seen mods, rockers, wizards, warriors, and a surprising number of flying vehicles. Thanks, as ever, for watching the Film Fans Guide. Don't forget to watch the movies and maybe even plan your own pilgrimage to some of British cinema's greatest moments. Just be careful on those cliffs. See you next time.